not hindsight cherry pick examples from last year, the best trades. Let's go the last trading week and let's go from Monday to Friday every single day. So I can't just show you the cherry picked perfect days. I'll show you everything, wins and losses. And then what I can do is reference my Twitter because on my Twitter, I've been giving trades live ahead of time. All right, folks, here we are on trading up. We've got Waka Asim in the house. Now we've just done a fantastic podcast and trust me, this is top draw. It's probably the only podcast you need to listen to in the show if you want to get a full grounding on trading and where to start and where to and how to sort of, I suppose, follow that journey through tra the trading career to the end. Um, now, we've got him on to do some charting today. And not just that, we're going to see the proof of it. He's been posting trades on Twitter. Uh, we're going to see his trade journal. There's a ton of stuff. You're going to learn an absolute ton. So welcome back to the show, Waka. Thank you very much, Scam. You, you speak so highly of me, I almost feel bad. Uh, but thank you, <laughs> you for having me on. And we were just speaking before now, like what's the best way to tackle this to bring value to your viewers? And I think we decided the most impressive and relevant thing we can do is not hindsight cherry pick examples from last year the best trades let's go last week the last trading week and let's go from monday to friday every single day so i can't just show you the cherry picked perfect days i'll show you everything wins and losses and then what i can do is whenever i come up come around a trade i can then reference my twitter because on my twitter as you know i mentioned in the pod i've been giving trades live ahead of time so i've been giving the entry stop loss explanations and management ahead and then we can also check the timestamps. If you see any suspicious behavior, call me out. If like, hey, that guy, that wasn't posted ahead of time, whatever it may be. And then what I can do is we'll walk through the signal and then I walk through the explanation now on this um, on this video, break down the trades. If you have any questions, jump in. And then at the end, what I can do is I can show my the logins on my end so that we can see the verifications of it wasn't just a signal. It was also taken on my end. Um, and you can see the profit and the executions and everything. So this should be a full roundup of the most recent relevant price action we can we can cover. Brilliant. And folks, just so you know, it is the 30th of January here, 2024. So we, we're not cherry picking the week either. It is the week before that we're going through. I've got no idea what it looks like. So let's dive in and have a look. Folks, here's my update for the Blue Guardian Challenge. So you can see here, not the best of weeks. Started off at break even and then three losers in a row. I can't believe it. It was the strategy. No excuses there. That's just how it played out. Then I had a, a win here, which should have been a bit bigger, but the bot got me out early. There's a bug in the bot, I've realized so I'm going to need to fix that and then the last but not least left the trade ready for Friday and it brought me back down to that 3% so I probably should have just ended the week um, the weird thing was the euro US dollar trade that took me back down here actually played out on gold and would have been a good trade on gold so I don't know why that just didn't work on euro they looked exactly the same anyway if you guys want to take your own blue guardian challenge there's a link in the description 10 cent off or on word trading that let's get on with the show okay so let's actually give a bit of context from a higher time frame so my belief is higher time frame is not too needed as I mentioned in the pod High time frame is great for a newcomer, a beginner trader, because it's like your training wheels when you're learning to ride a bike. You need it to give you reference, direction, high time frame bias, and so forth. But when you do get advanced, then M1 and M5, M15 reveals it all. And then the daily one doesn't provide you too much information apart from a huge POI, which again, what can we really do with that? Um, so yeah, I'll give you that uh, kind of overview from a higher time frame. And then we can we can jump into the time frames I like. So if we look from this higher time frame, which the H4 I'll start off with, we can see we had a push out. This is the low in the market, and then this is the high. So we have this range right now, and then we have an internal lower low or marginally, and then this area failed to make a higher high. So if it's failed to make a higher high and actually made a um a higher low, sorry, lower low, lower high. There we go. Then we know that there is exhaustion there. So this area did not continue. If could have made a higher high, it failed to. So we know that this area was a zone of indecision. Then that followed through to making a lower low. So we've gone from indecision to lower low. That confirms our internal bearish switch. So then when we look over here, we are probably going to suspect this area will be the new ceiling in price. So then we can position ourselves to sell down to this area at a minimum and then maybe continue bullish. So that's just a very, very basic market structure read. Inter uh, higher higher low, higher high, and then we're doing a complex pullback, internal structure all the way down to make a new higher low and potentially higher high. So when I do a top-down analysis, it's a glance like that. Oops, it's a glance like that where we just, you know, find our directional bias. We find our main push, which was this, 
And then we find our most relevant area, which is this, this bearish leg. And therefore we position ourselves to say short-term bearish, long-term bullish. And that's kind of a very quick read. Mm -hmm. And therefore to do so, you just mark out the two relevant areas. So the short-term area would be this supply zone. I want to look somewhere in here. And then the long-term buy zone is somewhere here. And then as price goes to these areas, we update our bias. But for with the information we have, from what we can see, that is the most appropriate read. Then what I'll do is I'll jump to M15. Remember, this is a Monday, so that doesn't necessarily mean there's a trade, but I'm just marking out, you know, how I begin the week. Now I have a lower time frame to kind of analyze deeply where exactly the short term bearish I was mentioning, where that can come from. So when I look into the short term, I know that the move originated from here. That was the beginning of the sell off. So I know that that's the high. And actually we noticed we had this high that had a a push down. So early sellers getting in the market and price came up, grabbed their liquidity. We just took their stops by just a little bit, but we know that move right there was a manipulation. How do we know it was a manipulation? It took previous highs. So it took stops and then led to a follow through. That's important. Manipulation plus follow through confirms it's a run of liquidity. And then it is significant because it leads to a break of structure of this level. So we know that price you know, had the bearish intent origination points here. So I always look as one POI as my origination point. So that will be all the way up here. But when we look where we are for this week, we're quite far off. So I don't know, at least for Monday, I'm not reaching there. So I, I know it in the back of my mind, but it's not relevant for today. So then I think, okay, what could be relevant for today? So when I look where we are on price action today, I look, okay, we're somewhere in this area. Is this area relevant for me? Well, I say, okay, well, this area had an internal lower high, lower low, lower high, boom, break of structure. So then this area was the last area that led to a break of this. So I know that not only do we have our origination points, we have this area, I like to call it a decisional point. It was that decisional point that led to the break of structure because if the market stayed bullish, internal higher low, internal higher high, price should have come here and gone on to make a higher high. But it failed, it decided over here we are bearish, so then I know that this is my decisional point, and then I can actually mark it out as a area of interest. So let me actually bring back some of my drawing tools. Okay, so right now I marked it out as this would this would be my area for Monday. It's probably my charting from Tuesday, uh, but I'll show you how we arrived to that point. Um, so let's actually let uh, Monday's price action play a little bit. So I've let Asia range play because I don't I don't trade the Asia session, and then all I want to do is realize okay. When my, when my London session opens, where can I look to? So right now, my most relevant area is here. So let's just mark it out. Let's put a supply point because it is an area that was a decisional. And then let's see on the M1 time frame how price action is reacting. Are we, go, are we coming into that area and doing anything nice? So right now, what I'm seeing is we've had um, Asia high liquidity, which is our first liquidity pool. I love to frame myself with the Asia range. Asia range gives me the which is the first raid. Is it going to raid high? Is it going to raid low? Then we build it around context. Obviously, that's not the main trade purpose. But we see that price raids Asia high and it taps into that supply zone we are mentioning. And then we're having this sell-off, which is cool to see. We're having a, a small bearish leg taking out this area. So it's a bearish break of structure. So then when I give it a few candles, I'm not trading Frank for open, which is this purple dotted line. That's my, this is my custom indicator I made for myself because my, my preference is to trade this gray box. This is my London open, my London window. That's my window of execution. I will not trade before and I probably won't trade after. This is my window. As I mentioned in the part, I have two currency pairs, Euro USD, GPU USD, and true, two trading windows, a London window, a New York window. These windows are optimized for when I saw the most time based manipulations and I need manipulations for an entry. And when I saw the most volatility and London open, that, that window that I have is the most volatile moments. So when I'm seeing prices approaching now, my window of opportunity, I've already seen that bearish sell off. And now what I need to notice is invalidation criteria. I think rather than having reasons to enter a trade, which anyone can do, you need to have strong invalidation criteria of, I see positives, but what are the negatives? And are those negatives strong enough to deter me? What I see over here is we have a buildup of liquidity. We have a run of liquidity. So that manipulation, and as I mentioned just previously, manipulation plus follow through led to that break of structure. I know that this area was a manipulation with intent. So when I see that and I mark it out as a demand area, it's a demand area because manipulation led to a bullish break of structure. So I can verify it as a demand. Price has now come into that demand area. So now for all I know, yes, it might be bearish from here, but then we've come to a demand area and we could just continue bullish. You know, from just a simple market structure, we had higher low, higher high, 
higher low, we could make a higher high. So just because I have a run of liquidity and a supply zone doesn't mean I jump into sales. So that for me is actually an invalidation. If it, and I call the concept efficiency of the pullback. This was inefficient price action because we came to a demand before we came to a sell opportunity. So now I'm not interested in a sell, even if it comes to my time window, because I know that this could just make a higher high. So that for me in that session, I didn't call out a trade. I didn't take a trade because I knew that I was invalidated already. Now I will still monitor and see if there's a potential opportunity. Um, but we can just see it's come to that supply zone and it's having the sell-off. It gave a reaction on the demand area, but then when, what do we see? Because things are not random. We see once again, price came to the demand area. That's where the buyers got interested. The buyers had a reaction. What do we see? A break of structure, internal higher high, internal higher low. And then, you know, buyers are going to be looking to do that. And they're going to get they're going to get taken out. And what I said to you was the market goes from manipulation to manipulation. Here, buyers are being invited in. They're told London open. They're seeing, if you remember the smart money concept of um, equal lows run of liquidity, we're seeing that too. It's very detailed, but we're seeing that. We're seeing equal lows run of liquidity. So then smart money traders are entering in this area and their stop losses are going to be right here. So when I see all of this stuff, I know that this is going to be a trap area. I'm seeing that prices inviting a manipulation and inviting all of these buyers that are going to get in on this area to take them out. And more importantly, which I love, smart money traders that love to trade that typical SMC pattern, which is build up of liquidity, run of liquidity, push out. They will trade that. So equal lows, run of liquidity, mitigation. They'll look for a fair value gap and whatever, order block. And that's the typical, typical SMC pattern. Now we can see it right here and I can show you Cam hundreds of examples of SMC going wrong, but we know that that SMC area, we have time window, we have demand area. That demand area is what? It's not a, it's not a random demand area. It's equal lows, run of liquidity, bullish break of structure. So we know already this was an SMC trap. So I'll mark it out because I like to build SMC traps into my analysis. And then we saw this demand area because we had the internal break of structure. And then once again, smart money traders we're seeing that pattern, they're entering there based on that equal lows run of liquidity push. So that's the wrong way to look at it. And it's okay. Sometimes I even get it wrong too. I get I get fooled into it because that's what the market is doing. It's inviting people in and then inducing them out. And that's kind of the vehicle of price action. So when we look at it in hindsight, what do we really see? We see price came into a zone, gave a reaction to invite people in. It built up this liquidity, which we can see. It built up these highs over here. It ran, induced that gave an internal break of structure relative here, came back and did a mitigation, closing that inefficiency or imbalance, whatever we want to call it, leading to a bearish break of structure. That bearish break of structure took out those traders that we just mentioned in the in that zone. And then what do we have? Price coming and filling it in, doing a mitigation. So once again, the main thing to notice was inducement was the key to it. That time-based manipulation, which I'll just do it in a red box, on our London Open, we had the inducement, reaction, mitigation, and then the intra-session volatility becomes bearish. And that, that's us done for the session because we didn't get an entry. It wasn't a prime setup. What is it likely to do? It's probably likely to go for Asia low liquidity. Uh, that's the next liquidity pool. So then we'll just wait for some form of follow through. And, and the, reason you, the reason you didn't take the entry there or, or get a setup, was that just because I may have missed a little bit here? Uh, was that because it was just inefficient price going into the into the demand zone or was oh, it so, something else? Yeah. So the way, the way I look into it is, uh, as an analyst, we can call the market, we can have ideas, but as a trader, we need to have a execution plan and a checklist to take, to take those ideas on. So for me, I will take a trade in the cell because I saw inducement of Asia high supply zone. I need to see a lower time frame model and my time window. So in this day, it, all those things didn't line up. I don't want to take a trade when, you know, a lot of the move has already happened and I've already come to that demand area, which is an invalidation for me. So I'm already got reasons against, even if I have, this is one of my entry models, by the way, internal break of structure, often inducement in the time window, that gray box I have, right things, wrong place. And for, that's for me enough of invalidation. If I got this exact same price action right here, then I'll take it. So context was was the whole difference. And again, I, I can call the market all the time, but taking the trade is is a different thing. So, okay, let's see what's happened here. So we've got a reaction randomly. We need to understand what's happened there. So I see, okay, well, we had this zone that is reacting off. What is that zone? Is it a demand area? Is there anything relevant information for me? And then I read into it. Okay, well, it looks like we've had some form of manipulation. And we have. We have this area. That price has quickly done a run of liquidity. Sorry, inducement low. So we've had an inducement low of that level. 
But beyond that, let's read into it a little bit more. In this area, what have we seen? We've seen this low right here. That was, we had a small, small run of liquidity right there, that wick. That wick right there, we could consider a smart money zone because we see we had a buildup of liquidity and the buildup in this case is not equal lows. It's that trend line where we have one touch, two touch, three touch. We have a trend line and then we have the inducement or smart money run of liquidity. And then price comes into that, um, whatever smart money trade is called. I don't know, an FU candle or whatever. And then it does a run of liquidity there. Hey folks, what a view behind me. I'm at Blackpool Markets headquarters here in Auckland, New Zealand. Speaking of views, you can get TradingView paid plans for free at Blackpool Markets, saving you up to $600 a year. That's right, get either the Essential Plus or Premium plans absolutely free, and all you need to do is trade from one lot a month at Blackpool Markets. And you can also get a 100% deposit bonus for your first deposit up to $1,000. All you need to do is click the Trading Nut link in the description below. So we know that that, in, that run of liquidity was the main one because it led to that push out. So we know what over here, it's a meaningful inducement. And then what does price do? It comes to that meaningful inducement zone and respects it and gives a reaction. And, and this is the reason I don't want to take a subprime trade because it gives a reaction, but it doesn't sustain. But when you have correct POI, correct area, correct inducement and time, it will follow through. And, and these, these are the reasons I don't take these kind of trades because they, they give a reaction, but they're not sufficient for a, for a proper trade. And, and in this week, we do get a proper trade so we can draw a comparison on, on, on why it's better to take, to take those ones. So now when we zoom out again and we see, okay, what's next? Okay. Well, I can see it's now fulfilled the bullish price action scenario of um, just simple market structure, higher, higher high, higher low higher low manipulation, goes on to make a higher high into a supply zone, comes back down, all the way to this demand area, forms a higher low. So we should now be targeting to make a higher high, maybe coming in deeper into our supply zone. Now, when I read into it further, this is where it gets fun for me. This is the typical SMC pattern. We have equal highs. We have that run of liquidity. Smart money traders love that run of liquidity. And then we have a bearish reaction. So SMC traders, they're going to be thinking, I want to sell here. They're going to find their fair value gap in balance, whatever you want to call it. And they're going to be looking to sell in that zone. And most likely that will be a smart money trap because of the price action read we've just had. So likely price is going to give some reaction, small reaction, grab their liquidity and maybe come lower. Or the main move of the day is now bullish. And we'll, we'll follow through and see what is exactly happening. So let's continue on M1 and just keep reading it. But now I'm marking out my relevant areas. So I want to see this get liquidated. And this area is probably going to maintain bullish. I'm not seeing signs to be bearish just yet. But we can be wrong. So let's see. Okay, so price is building up right here. Okay, what are we seeing here? We're seeing once again, build up, oops, build up of orders right here, building up a small trend line, run of liquidity, respecting this small level. Nothing to trade, but I can I can appreciate it. We had these triple top, quadruple top, that's liquidity. So prices ran liquidity low to go higher. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe price is ready to go bullish. And we had this demand area price came into, we've had a bullish break of structure. We've made an internal higher high. We've now probably made a higher low with a run of liquidity and we should go on to make a higher high. So that's all I can read, but I'm not going to trade it because it's not an appropriate setup for me. Okay, and there we go. We're getting that higher high. And I want to just see how it goes to that smart money zone at the top that I've that I've mentioned. Okay. Because okay, so already, okay, it didn't give smart money traders a reaction to, to fool them in, but it just swiftly took them out. Smart money traders that were on the wrong side of the market, they saw equal highs, run of liquidity, higher time frame supply zone. So they're seeing everything they need. They've got a higher time frame trend, which we established at the beginning when I did the, the four hour read. We've got the POI, we've got the run of liquidity, we've got the bearish reaction. And then if we look into it even more on how the smart money traders are getting it wrong, we also had this equal highs over here and then the smc zone right there this is ready for an smc trader to basically say you know let's sell it i mean some ict trader in the comments is going to say oh no but this and that but the reality is the average smc trader who's not deep nine years in ict but the average rookie trader will probably get confused here because you have high time frame trend lower time frame uh, confirmation of price action and then you could also say asia low liquidity which smc traders like to take they would be waiting for asia low liquidity so that would be the first target and, and again, context matters. Right now, it makes sense why, or hopefully I've explained it correctly to make sense why it's not going to do that is because we followed M1 price action and we saw it was bullish. So we knew that this was a higher high. You don't sell on higher highs. 
a higher high goes on to make a new higher high. And then we saw the inducement, inducement number one, inducement number two. So we're just waiting for a higher high to then maybe trade off. So now when we are in this area of price action, I want to see what price is going to do in the supply zone because it was a valid supply zone. It just wasn't ready. And I want to see if anything's going to happen. I'm approaching this dotted line, which is my New York open. So I want to see if anything's going to happen around there. But now I have this zone of interest, but no real area for me to trade just yet. So I monitor uh, and I wait for price action to reveal its hand. So right now, yes, there's a supply zone and people trade this. And and, and I, I actually, have, I have something personal about that. This kind of setup where you have a supply zone and then you have a push out and then this, just that price action, which we have, push out and then a small bearish reaction. People in hindsight will show that position and say, sell from there. And they will show it on Instagram and show the MT4. And on a day like this, it works. But believe me, this is a terrible entry model. I've tested it because so many times price will give just this and not give me the entry I need. And I won't take it because it's not a profitable model because how do we know when it's actually happening in, in real time? How do we know this is going to do this as opposed to just higher high, higher low, and just goes on to make a higher high? Because we have all of this area in the supply zone left. So we can just continue higher and then give bearish price action. So this is not a confirmation type. Uh, and if you take anything away from this video, it would be avoid this kind of entry. It's, it's not anything. It's just bullish price action. You know, it, th there's nothing there. Uh, even though you have an order block and an, uh, a fair value gap and everything. So for now, nothing. New York Open is coming. And now this is an entry type for me. I call it the two leg protocol where we have bullish push up, bullish push out, which we have right here. And then we have a reaction, a bearish reaction. That's nothing. That's the entry I don't like. But then we see this area fails to make a high high. So when we see it fails to make a high high, this area fails to make a high high. And then paired with goes on to make an internal lower low. This was the previous low, made a new low. When it goes on to make a new lower low and it doesn't come to my demand, the efficiency of the pullback that I mentioned as an invalidation previously, if it doesn't invalidate, this right here is a valid entry. So when you find the order block there, that's the valid entry. Conservative stop loss at the high. I don't take this trade because it wasn't enough confluences for me. Um, but I can I can see which entry model is playing. So it's within my three to seven pip stop loss range. It's my New York open to the minute, which is wonderful. And where do we target at least this area? So the reasons I'm personally not taking this trade is because it's not in my key time window. It's in a meaningful point in time. It's New York open to the minute, but it's not my meaningful time. And the potential of the trade, I need it to be a one to 10. That's my requirement. Mm. Of course, this could be a potential one to four, but it's not enough for me to justify an entry. So even though I have supply zone, I have smart money trap manipulation. So I've got time-based manipulation, New York open, supply zone, and target. It's just not enough for me. And, and I am quite a, I need to see my confirmations. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, but it's not a trade I took and it's not a signal I gave. Okay, so what do we see here? So this is actually interesting to see where we had that final manipulation, that final inducement, to then give the reaction. Now we just, we see, does it sustain? Okay, so right here, what has it done? It's come, it's mitigated that, it's coming back to that area. It's looking a bit messy now. And then it's given that uh, reaction. My break-even point is on an M1 BOS. So at this point, if I was in this trade, I'd break even. My break-even point is always fixed. It's at the new, uh, new low, low on M1. So I put it to break even there. Um, Okay, let me remove some of these messy tools and drawings. But hopefully right now you're, you're understanding the, the entry model type that we have mm -hmm. the two leg protocol. We have the two legs to confirm the price action. And then we have this last inducement that then leads to the follow through. And then we have the mitigation right there and follow through. I'm break even now, but it's interesting because it's coming to my key time window. So I'm personally not in the trade, but I can read what hap what's happening in price action. And I'll just see, okay, is there anything for me on this day? So as it approaches my window, I'm not happy to take the trade. And I'll explain why. Is because there's two things going on. Yes, it's the supply zone. And yes, we've had a manipulation here. Uh, and in theory, if we took the trade, we'd be break even when we had the break of structure right here. But what I'm not liking is I've had this build up and I've had this manipulation. And now I'm having a follow through. So we're having a bullish follow through after a manipulation. So now when there's an inducement high, and an inducement low, and the inducement high led to a bearish push, and the inducement low led to a bullish push. That is too much indecision. I don't know what's right or wrong. So it's better to just stay out. 
So I can monitor and see what's going to happen next. But for me, there's nothing. There's nothing here because there's doubt. So now price has done that bullish push out. So now I can see inducement low, bullish push out. But then who's to say, and I'm just running the devil's advocate because I don't know what's going to happen. Who's to say this isn't all build up of liquidity for the early sellers, like a trend line. We've had an inducement high run of liquidity. That inducement high has happened right before my time window. And therefore, that could be a bearish follow through. But I've also had an inducement low with a bullish push out. Indecision means no action. When a, when a clean setup comes, you'll realize, and I'll show you an example, that there's no doubt. That it just makes sense and you don't have to have confusion. So it's better to wait for those days and not try and figure it out and you know flip a coin and hope for the best. So, okay, now we read it. And we say, okay, well, now we see what happened. That was the inducement high. And the price came. It closed that fair value gap. So this basically means this was the inducement of the session. That was the inducement of the session. We had a push down. It came to this area. So what is it doing? It's also fooling the, the indecision people, the SMC traders, who are thinking build up of liquidity, run of liquidity, bullish break of structure. Price comes in, taps their entry, gives them a reaction, gives them hope, induces them out. So now we see the main inducement of the day, invited SMC traders, took them out, and now we've had a bearish break of structure. So now we can see, okay, well, now we're probably going to see a bearish break or a bearish uh, follow through. So I can actually mark that out as a bearish break of structure right there. But again, for me, no real trade. If I'm to be kind of like really aggressive and say, where can price react from? It's this area. That's where price can probably react from, but it's not a trade for me because uh, it's not confluenced enough. Okay, and then we get the follow through. Price comes, it's choppy. So again, not ideal. Okay, now we can really read it and say, okay, this price basically did the inducement, grabbed the fuel, the fuel fuel the move lower, and then what did it do? We had these equal lows right here. We had an inducement like this. Have we come to an area of interest? For me, not really. So I I can read it. It's like it's come to this area, done a manipulation, and now push out. But it was just not really a trade because I know that right now this was the main trend, inducement of the day or inducement of the session, inducement number two. Price came out, build up liquidity, inducement to come lower, and this becomes the main liquidity run to push out. Choppy day, not clean price action, and just a lot of indecision. So nothing to trade, but we can read and take a lot from it. So now when it's come to out of my window, this dotted line is London close. I'm done for the day. So what I'll do is now, I'll, this was Monday. I took no trade, but at least we understood what was going on a bit in price action. So what I'll do now is I'll just let the evening play or let Asia session play. Um, and then we just see what we do when it gets to our next time window, which is our London open. So let's let Asia play. Okay, now we're just arriving at Frankfurt Open. So let's do the same thing we did again as yesterday, or just at the beginning of this call, sorry. Um, yesterday's price action is, let's do a bit of a top-down analysis. So what do we see now? So we're still not at that extreme level that I mentioned, the preferred area, uh, the origination point of the bearish sell-off. That decisional point that we had that led to the BOS, we've now come above it. So now we're only left with this area. So it's not going to come here just yet in the London session, but we have this area to monitor. So I'll mark that out. And then what I'll also do is mark out any relevant liquidity. So I've already got it marked out. So this is my my nearest supply zone to current price action. And this is a run of liquidity zone that I can mention. So I'll get into that in a second. And then what do I need to see on the downside? I need to also mark out anything relevant. And for now, all I'm seeing is a very obvious trend line. Okay, we have first touch, second touch, third touch. I can extend it out, fourth, fourth touch, fifth touch, whatever. We're getting a very obvious trend line building. And for me, that becomes potentially a liquidity pool. Uh, so that's something I'll bring into uh, my analysis because uh, that trend line eventually will get taken out. And that's how I'm starting my day. So when I bring on my Asia range, this is how I start the day. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I have my Asia low liquidity target. I have my trend line liquidity that I just mentioned that could potentially be a target. So I know that I have reasons price can come lower. Okay. And then over here, I have maybe a potential demand area, but look, it's all liquidity. It's all just touch, 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 touch. There's all stop losses in this area. So I'm looking at uh, structure points and Asia low as liquidity targets below. And then to the high, I'm seeing, okay, there's a supply zone over here and I have Asia high liquidity. So that's my context of liquidity. Liquidity pools high, liquidity pools below. We have a form of supply. H4 is, is uh, bearish. Well, right now, all we are seeing on this is bullish price action. 
high, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, high. So right now we are bullish. So we shouldn't be fighting that trend just yet, but we need to see what is price action going to reveal on this daily cycle. So we have context of liquidity. We have context of structure. And then we just monitor M1 to say, okay, what's the action of the day? So let's get into it. Remember, so this is my first dotted line is Frankfurt Open. Second dotted line will be my London Open. I don't do anything on Frankfurt Open. So I'm just going to watch how the day starts. So right now we're just following that M1 bullish thing that we anticipated. And then price is doing something like this. So, okay, okay, what's happening here? So right now it's just bullish. It's clear as day, high, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, high. So bullish price action. Okay, so nothing to say here. We're just bullish. And then we have a bearish reaction. So I'm like, okay, interesting. We had this small trend line forming. Price did a small run of liquidity here. So we can see it. We had that buildup of liquidity. That that wick right there was the run of liquidity. And then we took out that trend line. And then we had a bearish reaction. So I'm saying, okay, interesting. It's not on my supply zone just yet. So I don't want to be too eager. And it's not in my time window. So no action for me. I'm just observing. Okay, we've had an inducement. When has happened? Right around my Frankfurt Open. So a time-based manipulation. And we've targeted liquidity. And then we have that invalidation criteria of if it comes to my demand, well, it's just higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, can make a higher, high. So I'm just observing for now. Nothing to be said. Price comes into that demand area. Oh, strong reaction. Okay, interesting to know. Price is now approaching my key time window. And it's building up this liquidity pool and it's coming to this supply point. It's not come to my supply area yet, so I can't jump in. But I'm saying, okay, I want to see what happens in this manipulation zone. Is there anything about to happen here? So what I'll do is, because as you know, I trade EU and GU, I'll do a split screen. And let's get into EU very quickly. And let's go to, what was the date? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday 23rd. Uh, so I'm just going to draw a comparison between EU and GU on the same day just to see what, uh, if there's anything we can make of it. Tuesday the 23rd. Okay. And then we'll jump back down to our M1. So we have everything side by side now. And I just want to see is there anything for us to draw a correlation between? So to skip the the whole top, uh, you know top down analysis on EU, we're just going to say this red box over here, the higher time frame supply zone that we had on GU, right here is the the equivalent supply zone is here on EU. Go and check it in your own time, but it's the same supply zone, same conditions. Then we have the same Asia high over here. This is our Asia high on on EU. Now EU, what we are seeing is prices come to the supply zone that we like, but on GU we failed to come to the supply zone. So I'm drawing this comparison. I'm saying, okay, that's interesting. One has and one hasn't. So I'm saying EU ha GU sorry, has failed to come to my supply. EU, however, has come to my supply. So I'm thinking, okay, interesting. And just as we mentioned, we've got a manipulation here on GU that led to the push down, but it invalidated, it came to my demand. How about an EU? Well, on EU, that equivalent demand is here. So it hasn't come to my invalidation point just yet. It hasn't come to my invalidation. It's done the same inducement manipulation and it's in my supply zone. So EU on this day is looking better than GU. It's the same similar price action, but the details make all the world of a difference. Supply zone, and I didn't have the invalidation, but I'm still getting everything else. I'm still getting the manipulation that I've got here and I'm getting a bearish break of structure. So look, we have higher high, higher low, higher high, bearish break of structure. So now I'm thinking this is a bit more interesting. So now my attention comes to EU instead of GU. And... And it's just approaching my London Open. So I see, okay. So I actually gave this trade right here. I found the inefficiency. I found the stop loss of that area. The stop loss becomes 3.3 pips. So I round up to 3.5. Let's jump onto my Twitter. And I can show it. Okay, 23rd of January, your USD sell signal. So I basically mentioned the reasons. It was higher previous day's liquidity. So I can show that very quickly. We had high of previous day liquidity. So we had a run of liquidity of previous day's high. Supply zone, it was a decisional. So it's come to my supply zone. Post SMC trap. So we had equal highs, run of liquidity right here and bearish break of structure. Price wipes smart money traders out. So we've got high of previous day liquidity. We come into a supply zone. We have SMC trap. We're in our London window, my key window. And um, we have an M1 break of structure. 
And let me just confirm that we have supply zone, previous day high, Asia high, and then we have a small inducement and bearish break of structure. So that's the zone I want to be uh, mentioning. And that's the sell limit that I that I send out. So um, you have my sell limit. You can see exactly where I'm entering, where my stop loss will be. And uh, then I'm also mentioning, this is your break-even point. This is going to be your first partial at 1 to 3. And this is going to be your second TP at 1 to 10, which is standardized. So I give that signal ahead of time. And I give the full explanation breakdown. And then I monitor the trade. And I show them, okay, now I got tapped in on my MT4. And follow through with price action. So now I've said... One to three years reward TP1, it's been met. 50% of your position size, take it off there. Um, and then, yeah, I give my whole explanations and then we just follow through the day. Um, and now what I do is I, I, I draw the comparison on EU and GU. So I'm saying this is what's happening on EU. This is what's happening on GU. And I'm giving some commentary. So I'm giving live updates. So let me speak about that commentary, which I had, uh, which I can draw for you guys or for everyone now is over here, we've been tapped in and let's give it a few more candles. We break even here. And my first partial is there. So very quickly, one to three risk reward. I've now banked 1.5%, assuming 1% risk. And I have my key time window just about to hit. So I want to see what the, you know, the action of the London session will be. Now, the problem I'm seeing on GU, which is concerning, is we have price coming into the demand that led to a bullish higher high. Price comes back, higher low, push out, fails to make a low, goes on to make an internal higher high. So I'm seeing prices climbing like this. So potentially we could be having a bullish switch and price is now also coming to that invalidation point here on GU and EU as well. So now I'm thinking, could I be, be taken out for break even? Because on GU, we're seeing that internal bullish price action mm -hmm. on EU, we're coming to the same area. So I want to be thinking smart and say, okay, well, what is my best odds here? And I also want to mention we're getting buildup of liquidity, liquidity I do in purple. And then we're getting that inducement. So just because it's hit my TP, we also have to read the opposite side, which is run of liquidity and demand area and GU showing bullish price action. So that's what I was commentating on Twitter. I was like, look, we've had a run of liquid, you know, buildup of liquidity, inducement and bullish break of structure. I want to be careful because in GU, I'm also seeing bullish price action, the green dots being bullish. So right now, be cautious. We're already break even. We've already taken a partial, but just be careful. Don't jump in. Don't do anything crazy. Just be aware of what's happening. So then when we continue on, on price action, I can also say, okay, well, let's see if this zone respects. Let's watch. So we're getting a bullish break of structure. I also know that this is a order block with a fair value gap. I just want to see what happens. I'm not going to trade it. I'm already in the position, but I just want to see what happens there. So I say, okay, price does something very interesting. Time-based manipulations, which we have been talking about all day long. We get a buildup of liquidity. We get a run of liquidity into that order block. So let me actually just make this better to see center back. We're seeing we have uh, the induced our entry that led to a bullish break or, or bullish, sorry, bearish sell off. Price slowly climbs up. It does an inducement right here, taps into a supply zone, closes the imbalance. What time is it? Bang on London open, 8 a.m. UK time to the minute. We're getting a time based manipulation. That leads to a break of structure, something very, very interesting. Let's see what GU is doing at the same time, at the same minute. I'm seeing right here. It it did a it did that manipulation just before. Something okay, this is interesting to know. We're getting a manipulation and a manipulation. I'm not trading either one of them, but I want to see the follow-throughs just to see who's in control. So right now I'm seeing this is building up liquidity. So interesting to know. I can also label this as just equal highs and supplies on right above. So I'm thinking this is interesting. Maybe we're going to get an inducement of that. But if I'm seeing this is going to come up to potentially induce, this means this might take me out. So I'm monitoring and I'm letting Twitter know this is what I'm seeing. Let's see what happens, but no action to be taken. So let's first play GU and see what the action is there. Okay, interesting. So right now on in our London window, the gray box, we saw these equal highs. We saw a run of liquidity. Closing that fair value gap, that was the previous manipulation. So if I see a follow through now and I target that liquidity and I take out this demand area, then I can confirm this a bearish session ahead, a bearish London session ahead. So I want to see if that's happening. So I say, okay, price is now shooting for that liquidity. And now it's taking out the demand area. Okay, now interesting turn of events. Now I can actually say I'm in my gray box of time window. And even though GU did not come to my supply area above just yet, we can see clear bearish intent. 
not only do we have Asia high liquidity and the, the structural high that I mentioned, we also have manipulation, inducement number one. When does it happen? Frankfurt open. Inducement time-based manipulation. Then what do we have? Another buildup of liquidity, inducement and follow through. When does it happen? London open. Two time-based manipulations. And when we look below, we have all of this liquidity of Asia low to target. And remember that trend line liquidity that I mentioned at the beginning, liquidity resting below. So I know that this could be an interesting sell-off just to target uh, the liquidity below. Just to quickly review that. This trend line liquidity I want to target and this Asia low I want to target. So I know that if I'm selling over here, I have huge potential of the position. So that for me right now got me happy on GU. This price action confirmed it to me. I want to just do the equivalent read on EU before I mention my next signals that I gave to Twitter. So I want to see what happens here. So we had that manipulation right there on London Open. I want to see if it's going to follow through as well. Okay, we're getting a follow through. So we've taken out that demand area, the invalidation point. It has now been just about taken out. Well, let's actually confirm, does it get taken out? Okay, this one doesn't get, quite get taken out. This one has actually left liquidity for me. It's left equal lows. You know, previously, what would people say as a support level? We're seeing as liquidity. So we know that we have liquidity to target here, time-based manipulation, bearish break of structure, time-based manipulation. So let's jump back to Twitter and see what I'm saying. So I mentioned the interesting updates of, you know, the manipulation happening on the time base, you know, so I say interesting manipulation. GU did a smart money trap uh, and then uh, tapping into M1 supply. Divergence on EU, you know the drill. So I've just, you know the drill means because I've been saying a lot on Twitter, people should start you know, recognizing the things I'm saying. So then I actually gave a second signal, um, which is, let me go back to my feed. Um, right here. So first signal of the day, the EU position that I, that I gave, we we got profit on that. We banked the one to three. So that signal right here, I've tagged it. The Euro USD sell signal that I gave in the morning, that position right there. Now we reached our TP1. We took 1.5% profit. So now next update is first signal of the day, we banked 1.5%. Perfect. So using that profit now, let's sell GBP USD following what I've just explained now. Induce a number one on Frankfurt Open and then induce a number two on London Open, bearish break of structure. I'm mentioning the entry and stop loss right here. Um, and I'm also showing my MT4. So I'm ready to go. I've given the explanation, live updates, and that's ready to go. And then shortly after, we get a very strong reaction. And I've also taken the trade. And I'm mentioning, okay, mic drop now. One to three risk reward, TP1 met on GU as well. So now 1.5% on the first signal, 1.5% on the second signal. So total 3% profit so far. Two, two public signals, both given ahead of time. And we're scaling profits of the day. So let's jump back to our training view just to see um, that play out. So I gave that entry and stop loss ahead of time. Price comes in, taps into my entry. Still in my key time window. Everything should be making sense now. Trading away from the inducement of the day. London inducement, Frankfurt inducement, bearish break of structure. Everything following through, clean price action. And that's what, so back to what you asked at the beginning, Cam. The, I said at that same price action, if it was at the top, I would have taken it. But on, on yesterday's price action, it didn't align correctly. But this is very similar, similar price action. But today it was good enough, mm. uh, which is why I gave it as a signal. So now I know my break-even point is here and my one to three is is there. I always take a partial at one to three. Um, so let's just flick through now. We hit our one to three very quickly. And now I just know that I've got my session volatility ready. I've done everything I need to do, taken a partial and break even. I just want to target Asia low now, but my one to 10 where I'm actually going to be out full volume is over here. So I can leave that trade and then EU, I want to see if anything's going to happen on that same manipulation point. So I actually gave EU as a signal too. I was basing it on the, the order block and the, the fair value gap here, but price missed it. So I, my EU signal didn't trigger, but I can also show how I gave it. Uh, okay, it's going to be a bit of scrolling, but this, this is my EU feed. I mean, yeah, I'll just say, go go ahead and read my Twitter and you can, you'll can you be able to find the live commentaries of everything. So the EU signal, the second one missed, but remember, we're still in the first one. So EU is now active and going towards target. GU became active a little bit later, but now that's also in profit and ready to go. And then we just let the rest of the day play. I've taken my trade. There's nothing for me to do now. I have my, I'm either going to get break even or I'm either going to hit my take profit. Okay. So this price is just doing its thing. And I'll read, I'll read through what this price action is. 
and then eventually does go to my target. But let's actually read the details of what is going on because this is not random stuff. Even though we're not trading it, it would be good to read it. So once again, I can see we had build up over here, inducement of that area, bearish break of structure, mitigation. Same stuff every day. What do we have? Build up, inducement, mitigation. So this, if, if there's no trade to take, at least I can confirm the sellers are still in control because we're getting inducement, follow through, inducement, follow through. So all right now I know the sellers are in control. So I'm happy to hold volume until my TP. And then eventually it does go towards my TP. And then that's when I update Twitter and say, okay, excellent stuff, guys. Um, I mean, I just show the whole follow through. Euro is Steve going towards TP. I'm still in the trade. I'm telling exactly how everyone uh, should be managing that. So that's the EU signal. And then the GU1, uh, where do, it does the same. Oh yeah, TP2, what is this one? This is GU that met my final target. And then Asia low, that was my final. So I my analysis was Asia low, but my trading was not. My trading was one to 10, I cap it. But my analysis was good to see it also came correct. It went to Asia low. Um, so that should be sufficient coverage of those two trades. Uh, where is my profile? Twitter has some wild stuff, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You never know what pops up. Exactly. Okay, let's jump back to 23rd. I mean, as you can see, I'm, I've been updating almost every single day all of my trades over here. So that's 23rd. So then the final update is TP2 on both. GU hitting TP2 and then the same for EU. So, I mean, it happens both on this day. So this is a great day. And, and, and then we got 1 to 10 on both positions. 1 to 10 final target on our EU. But also just to forecast our analysis, it also goes to target that trend line. We are now approaching our New York window. There was no opportunity for me, but New York window does the follow through to target all of that liquidity. So it's good to see our analysis played out. We had the trend line liquidity and Asia low. We are out. We've taken our profit, but price follows through what we anticipated. And then we can do the, the same on uh, EU where we have previous days, previous days liquidity, supply zone, Asia high, manipulation. Then we saw the lower time frame confirm it. I also have a lovely smart money trap that I want to target here, where we have these equal lows, that run of liquidity, and then bullish push out. Smart money traders are going to buy here, Asia low, and then also this, this liquidity that I want to tap, that trend line. First touch, second touch, third touch will be here somewhere. So I know that buyers are going to be entering in the zone. I want to sell into that. I want to see them get manipulated. <clears throat> so then it follows through and takes all of them out. So perfect stuff. Just like EU went to target, so does GU. And then time-based manipulation. Look how cool this is, Cam. Even though I didn't trade it, what is happening in my key time window? So my second gray box, my second window, same thing again. We built up liquidity here, build up. We get an inducement like so. And that confirms to me that the sellers are in control. So once again, time-based manipulation on the minute. Outline. So then this confirms to me, great. I, I'm not going to sell it. Uh, it doesn't give me an entry criteria in the end. I've already taken profit, but it confirms to me the market laws are still there and everything we expected to work. So I'm done for the day now. It's out of my key window on both, but both hit final TP. So just to summarize, one to three risk reward, I take 50% volume, so 1.5% on both. So 1.5 and 1.5. So first TP is led to 3%. Then a 1 to 10 risk reward, I take the remaining volume. So it was a 1 to 10, but I had half my position size. So it's 5%. So 5% on this second TP, 5% on this second TP. So when I add it all up, it becomes 5 plus 5 and 1.5 plus 1.5. So it's uh, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it's about 12.5 or 13% profit for the yeah. day. Yeah, um, and that's kind of what I've mentioned over here. So just to give the final cherry on top. So this is my, uh, it's, it's linked to my broker. Uh, this is Tradezilla. So then this is where I journal and document all of my trades. So here you can see exactly where I executed the trade. I mean, this is also not needed to show because I have the MT4s of everything. And I'm uh, if I'm going to show a limit, a sell limit, I might as well take it. So that's my sell limit before at 12.32 Dubai time. We can see when I took the trade and then... And then we have the follow through at the end at 3.29 Dubai time, we have the execution. So I've already shown the execution on MT4, but just for us now on this video, we can see the GU position. It was that first inducement on Frankfurt Open, second inducement on London Open, bearish break of structure. I execute on that zone. I take my first TP over here at the 1 to 3, and then I take my final TP at the 1 to 10. And in the end, it did continue further. Um, 
So I put on this uh, 70 lots and then I took my partials accordingly. So my total risk was just under $2,000. Obviously, I leave it a little bit less to cover my uh, commissions. Um, but yeah, that's that position. And you can see that over there. And then I also have my EU position. Same thing. We had the first manipulation that I mentioned over here. This one tapped into the supply zone, bearish break of structure. And then I'm taking entry on that mitigation. One to three risk reward on that candle. I take my first partial and then I take my full volume on that candle right there. One to 10. So this one, similar thing. I risked $2,000. This one was about 60 lots and yeah, $11,000 over here. And this one being 13,000. So just under 25 K for the day. Um, and then obviously, so I've given the signals, called it live ahead of time. I've explained the whole thing. I've shown my NT4 and I've shown my broker um, connected uh, metrics. That's that day. If you want me to continue cam, I can also go through the rest of the week because I did give a couple of signals uh, for the rest of the week. But as you wish, if we're I, short for time, I think, we can... well, I think it'd be a, it'd be a shame not to do it. So let's do it. Sure. If, you've, if you've got time, I've got yeah, time. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Let's do it. Maybe we split it up so we can do it as a part one and two. But okay, so we finished now Tuesday. We've come to our London close. That's that dotted line. So now what do I do? I'm done for the day. I let Asia play. So let's let our Asia play and then we come to the next day. So Asia is always the framing of the day. I just want to see how does Asia, oops, sorry, I've gone too far. How does Asia present? And is there, that's my framework for the day. I want to see what's going on. So right now, what can I see from this day? So I've got a bearish push. So that's the immediate price action. It missed my supply zone, which is not ideal, but I can see that we had this purple line, which is my liquidity run of liquidity and then bearish reaction. So I know that I'm still getting healthy price action. It's also cool to know that we have this resting liquidity to target. So I'm thinking, okay, this could be bearish price action. And then we have this kind of manipulation area that supplies on. So I'm thinking, interesting, is there anything here for me on this day? I'm kind of prepared to go bearish based on what I'm seeing so far, but I want to see on M1, what is M1 showing me? So right now I'm kind of framed for bearish. So what do I see? First of all, I see equal highs and Asia high and run of liquidity potentially and Frank for open. Now this to me is screaming smart money trap. It's way too obvious. So I just want to see what's going to happen here, but I'm, I'm thinking supplies on right above false smart money pattern building. I'm not liking that. And when I'm reading who's in control, because that's more important. I can forecast anything, but who's really in control right now I'm seeing Inducement number one. So buyers are in control because they follow through. Build up of liquidity. Inducement number two, follow through. So buyers are still in control. Build up of liquidity. Oops. Build up of liquidity. Inducement number three, follow through. So right now, buyers are in control. So I'll be stupid to sell. So right now, I'm just seeing buyers are in control. I might be getting an inducement here, but it's not in a relevant area because my supply zone is right here. So this probably will be this inducement carrying on to come to the supply. That's what I'm thinking for now, but let's see. I don't trade Frank for open as it is, so this is all going to be watching. Okay, so as we suspected, it was a trap. And that small inducement right there was the fuel to then take it out. Now I've had a smart money trap, Asia high liquidity and supply zone. Okay, now I'm starting to build a thesis. Now I'm starting to build a potential trade idea. I need to see confirmation though. So let's see if we get anything. Price comes into the supply, starts to slow down, comes a bit bearish. Let's actually square that off. Now it's coming to this demand area. That's an invalidation for me, but let's see if it respects. It's respecting. Okay, so this right now looks like a good setup. We've got smart money trap, Asia high trap, Asia high liquidity, supply zone, and approaching London window. So right now, just as the previous day, the trade that we took, very similar idea. But this one is not for me. The reason being, we've come to that demand area. That is an invalidation for me. So even though everything else looks good, I have time, I have seller's reaction, I have manipulations, I have everything that I had yesterday. This for me, unfortunately, is invalidation. And the invalidation is there to protect me. It's not to make me frustrated. It's not for me to waste an opportunity. It's there to protect me because I've tested it. When this happens, it's not a profitable setup to be taking. So even though I have a good zone over here. I don't want to take it because this could be just bullish price action. We could say higher high, higher low, higher high. Like there's no reason for it to mm. 
you know, all of a sudden necessarily go bearish, especially when I have that inducement right there. Then we have a mitigation, mitigation. We could just grab that liquidity and then start to have a conversion. So we just wait. If There's they had no taken out the low there, would that have made you change your mind? Yes, yes. If this took out this point and gave a bearish break of structure, I'm definitely selling it right. because that's exactly what happened yesterday. So this is a prof profitable variation. This is an unprofitable variation. And, and we should know that. We should know what our negation criteria what is the devil's advocate what is those invalidation criteria? and that again just as much as your confluence is for a trade you should have them as a checklist and you should have the data for it you should also have an invalidation checklist and the data for it and then you make a decision accordingly so just from my experience i know that this is not a prime setup to be taking so price is tapping in and again it's, it's tempting me to be honest we're getting a build up we're getting an inducement we're mitigating that area, but I, I've learned from experience it's not the right thing to be doing. So even if it plays, I'm okay with it. It's just not my trade. Okay, so now what is it doing? It's it's coming to that smart money zone, that run of liquidity, and it's respecting it. So I want to see what's going to happen here because it's a demand area. I've also now taken all of this liquidity, that trend line liquidity that was forming. So for me now, this could be the inducement because look, it's just one, two minutes before my London open. So this could be my time-based manipulation. And I also know that I have this uh, seller's trend line right here. One touch, two touch. So this could also be a trap. So that's why I'm not too keen because I have this buildup of liquidity, inducement low, tapping into demand and trend line above. Indecision means no action. So I don't know what's going to happen. I have reasons it could be a sell. I have reasons it could be a buy. Let's just take no action and see what's going to happen. London open. And okay, it looks like it was an inducement low to target that trend line liquidity. We learn from our invalidation criteria. It came to the demand. That's an invalidation. We just avoided a loss. And that's money Money not lost is money earned or something like that, right? Mm. Um, the saying. So, you know, that, that's important to know. And again, me a couple of years ago would have taken a loss here because I'm like, oh, I've got everything I need. I've got supply zone, smart money trap, Asia high, bearish sell-off, everything I need. And the time, it was, you know, the movement happened on London open to the minute. Time-based stuff is not random. Look when the move happens. And again, just in the last three days of price action, how many times have we shown to the minute? I think four examples already in, in three days price action. When I show you a hundred examples over the space of a month, there's no denying it. Time-based manipulation is a thing. These inducements that we're seeing every 10 minutes, it's a thing. But again, I've learned from my mistakes. Previously, I would have taken a loss here. Now, I've learned, now I know better. So right now, all I can say is the session is looking bullish. So this supply zone is probably going to get taken out. So let's see what happens. And if we even get any entry for anything. So price is coming to the high of that supply zone. And eventually it is taking out that supply zone. So now supply zone has been taken out. And I don't want to get too lost in the M1 and say, oh, that's an inducement. And then that's an inducement. But right now, what are we just seeing? Indecision. We've had build up, inducement and small inducement over here. So when we see these tiny M1 inducements and we don't know what to do, focus on the inducement of the day, inducement of the session, which was this one, because that led to the time-based manipulation leading to a push out. So right now I know the, the buyers are in control. So then I just wait and, and I just wait for a relevant setup to present. This area could be one. Or if I go to the actual fair value gap, that's a potential zone, but I don't, I don't like to take trades when price is high. I don't like to buy when price is high. And right now, when we look where we are, this is the origination point. If price is down here, I will buy. When price is all the way up here, it, I don't want to buy right at the tail end of a move. So I will not take a trade over here, but I'm just going to watch price action and just see what happens. Okay, interesting. What do we see? Inducement number one was this red box. Inducement number two was right here. We got this build up, we got this inducement within our London window and follow through. So we we know right now, even if we didn't take a trade, intercession volatility is bullish. So I know that inducement number one, inducement number two. I know I'm bullish for the session. Now I just need to quickly look at a higher time frame and think where could we be going? Where is price taking us? Okay, well it could be starting to attack previous day's sell. So maybe we're coming to this area somewhere there, or maybe we're coming to the first supply zone that we had in mind from the beginning of the week. Whatever. I don't know. It's going to be one or the other, but right now we're just seeing bullish price action and no trade to be taken. So that's that. And now I'm outside of my first window. So I just let price play and I'll wait to see what happens in my second time window because the price is just shooting up. 
And I'm going to wait for New York Open to see if there's anything for me. So New York Open will be approaching shortly. And again, there's nothing really here. We've had a bullish push out and a retracement. That purple line is New York Open. So New York Open is happening. Where are we? Well, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. This is our origination point of that push out. We're just in the middle of it. We're literally in the middle of it. So no man's land. There's there's nothing here for us. Okay, now we approach our key time window. Approaching. Is there anything for, for us to do over here? Well, this one didn't lead to a bearish break of structure. We just had a retracement. This for now just could be high, 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 low, going on to make a high, high. So there's no real plan. There's no real setup. There's nothing really going on. So this looks like just a day we watch and wait. Right, folks, we're halfway through this epic, absolutely epic chart breakdown with Walker. Now, what we're going to do is break this into a part two. So you're going to have to stay tuned on the channel. It's actually going to drop probably in a few weeks time. You're going to get the full finished week all broken down in so much detail here um it goes on for like another 45 minutes folks so stay tuned stay subscribed i know you're gonna love this one for now if you haven't checked out his interview go and check it out below the video and all the links to find out more about him all right folks thanks for watching and we'll see you in part two very soon